Madrid, a sprawling metropolis with architecture representing several centuries. A drive down the main Gran Via Boulevard gives visitors an impression of the energetic vibe of the Spanish capital. Located directly in the center of town, the Plaza Mayor is Madrid's main square. It's a popular gathering place filled with cafes. Public relations manager Marcela de la Peña was born and raised here. In her spare time, she writes a blog giving tourists insider tips. If I only had a day, I would uh, definitely suggest a bit of culture, one of, a visit to one of the three major museums we have in Madrid, like the Prado, the Reina Sofia or the Thyssen. Uh, I would also suggest shopping because um, apart from the big and well-known Spanish brands that everybody knows, we also have in the Salamanca district really nice shops of Spanish brands. And um, the third thing I would suggest, the Mercado San Miguel. The Mercado de San Miguel is located just a few meters away from the Plaza Mayor. The structure dates back to 1916. Unlike other Spanish markets, this is not a place to do ordinary grocery shopping, but rather a venue to enjoy an array of Spanish delicacies. Mercado San Miguel is very touristic. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of people at every hour of the day. It was an old market that they have uh, renovated. And uh, the good thing is that you have uh, like all the good choices of Spanish gastronomy, especially the Iberico ham. Following Marcela's second tip, we head to the shopping district of Salamanca. This is Madrid's most exclusive suburb with narrow tree-lined streets and small boutiques which offer unique items that are hard to find anywhere else. Marcelo's blog also outlines where tourists can go if they are in search of authentic Spanish design. Madrid is very good for shopping. A must is Salamanca neighborhood for uh, that, and uh, you will find like very exclusive boutiques like this one, where they sell uh, very fashion leather bags with Spanish leather, of course. For tourists interested in taking in some culture, the Prado Museum, or the Thyssen Bornemisa's private collection, or the Rena Sofia must be put on the list of places to go. The Reina Sofia Museum opened in 1992 and houses contemporary art, including an icon of the 20th century, Pablo Picasso's Guernica, depicting the 1937 bombing of the town in the Basque Country. We have a great collection of certain Spanish artists uh, like uh, Dalí, like Miró, like Juan Gris, Maria Blanchard, and of course uh, Picasso, a collection that deals uh, with artistic issues, but also deals with political, with social issues, a collection that is historical, is our immediate past, but it also has to do with the present. For sports fans, a tour of the Bernabeu Stadium is also a must. This is home to the champion soccer team Real Madrid. The Stadium Museum houses all of the team's trophies, including the 12 European Cups won over the years. The best way to round off a day of sightseeing in Madrid is by heading back to the city center to the well-known street of Caba Baja. This is where numerous tapas bars are located. The Spanish typically eat tapas as a snack between meals and they are always served with a drink. Nowadays is very common, but not many people know that the origin of the word is because in the old times when you used to order a drink, they would uh, serve it with a cover like this, which would be a bit of cheese or ham. Nowadays, when you ask for tapas, uh, they can serve you something like this. We have a little bit of cheese, we have chorizo, and we have uh, breadsticks. Madrid might have a big city feel to it, but life here moves at a slow, leisurely pace. And that is also what tourists can enjoy when visiting this city.